Okay. Uh, thank you, Julien, for inviting me to speak today. So the, um, f uh, the topic of my talk is uh, quite precise. Um, I chose uh, for the doctoral school to focus on an important tool uh, in the process of assessing the risk, uh, namely the fragility curves. Uh, to characterize the vulnerability of structures under seismic loading, but not only, as you will see. Um, so here is uh, the table of content of my talk. So first, uh, why do we need fragility curves to uh, assess the vulnerability of structures? Then I propose to you a simple example to build fragility curves step by step for a simple structure and um, so to uh, address the fragility of a bridge pier. And at the end, I will give you an application uh, uh, coming from a research project, uh, application to a large set of buildings uh, in masonry. So first of all, uh, why do we need fragility curves to uh, assess the vulnerability of existing uh, structures? Um, you can see here, so broken dam due to an earthquake or here um, damage uh, to a church. So the issues uh, are the structural safety, but also the preservation of uh, historical heritage. The request, so we need um, to know uh, how to prevent this damage uh, or to address these issues. We need a decision support tool uh, that matches uh, some requirements. So we need to relate the hazard to its effects on structures. And we also need to account for uncertainties, uncertainties uh, regarding the hazard, and also uh, uncertainties as regards the structural sta uh, state, because we are talking about existing and aging uh, structures. Um, and this tool needs to be integrated into a probabilistic risk assessment approach. So the answer is the fragility curve. Uh, graphically, it looks like this. So it's the failure probability, PF, like probability of failure, of the structure or, or the structural elements, uh, given an intensity measure of uh, the hazard, of the considered hazard. So to be more precise, uh, the fragility curve is the probability that the damage me measure that we chose exceeds a defined uh, threshold given a uh, hazard intensity. So in terms of uh, equation, uh, it's translated as the probability of failure given a uh, uh, hazard intensity. It's the probability of the damage state that we have to define to exceed a certain threshold given the intensity measure. It can be applied to a structure, but also to a structure component that is of interest for uh, industrial uh, capacity, uh, for example, uh, electrical components in uh, uh, power plants. And it also, it can be applied to uh, all kinds of hazards. So I will then focus on the seismic uh, uh, hazard. But I want to give you another example uh, issued from the literature. So here you have uh, fragility curves of a reinforced concrete wall uh, subject to snow avalanches. So the probability of failure of the wall is uh, computed. Uh, using as damage indicator the ultimate displacement of the middle of the concrete wall subject to uh, the snow avalanche that is uh, characterized here by the maxi maximal pressure applied by the avalanche on the wall over time. You have several curves because uh, they studied several steel ratio inside uh, the wall. Another example here, you have the fragility of a church, sorry, <laughs> subject to a seismic hazard. Here the damage indicator is the overturning of this part 
uh, of the church, so the top front panel between the nave and the core, uh, given as the intensity measure the peak ground acceleration, so it's the maximum acceleration of the seismic uh, ground motion over time which is a classical uh, measure used for a seismic signal. It's, it's not the only one, but it's a classical one. So why is it uh, useful in assessing the risk? Because it's uh, one of the components of risk. Risk is the combination uh, of uh, the hazard and also the, let's say, issue or loss. So here, the vulnerability. So the total probability of uh, damage or, fail or failure of what you are looking at is uh, the combination of um, the probability of failure given a hazard intensity, that, that is our uh, fragility uh, curve, and the probability of occurrence of this uh, intensity of hazard that is here given by the derivative of the hazard curve for the, the seismic uh, intensity. And then the sum over all the scenario uh, gives you the total probability of uh, damage of your structure. So it's interesting to be able to compute such a probability to then take a decision on uh, retrofitting or what we can do with uh, this structure. So now, uh, to be more precise on the fragility curve, I propose you an example. So it deals with the middle pier of this uh, viaduct that is a structure that has been tested in a laboratory at the scale uh, 1 over uh, 2.5. Um, so here you have a schematic um, view of the structure and uh, here the seismic uh, load, the scaled seismic loading that has been applied. So first of all, we need a model for the structure. Here, uh, let's model the pier as a single degree of freedom, as a linear single degree of freedom oscillator to uh, stay uh, simple with um, the ma mass and the stiffness computed uh, from the real scale structure and damping chosen as a quite a classical for, uh, for structure, structural damping. So we, are, we know the equation of motion for such an oscillator. And um, we then will be able to compute very quickly a numerical solution, assuming that we, ha we can have the ground motion. So here I choose accelerograms from a synthetic uh, database with the various uh, aimed uh, PGAs. Uh, and the structural response is computed uh, using uh, an integration uh, scheme. Here, a new mark time integration scheme, which is a very uh, classical for uh, this kind of uh, dynamic solicitation, that is a quite slow dynamic solicitation. So we need a model of the structure, choice of ground motion, and we need uh, to choose, as you have seen, an intensity measure. So here I chose the peak ground acceleration to illustrate the methodology. And a damage measure. So here uh, what I chose is the maximum top displacement of the pier. Okay. And then uh, using, for this example, 30 synthetic uh, accelerograms and only uh, one structure. So there is no variability inside the structure here for the example. Uh, you, will, you can have the response of the single degree of freedom uh, strict structure to the seismic signals. With, so here you can observe the maximum displacement with respect to uh, the peak ground acceleration of the signals for the 30 uh, applied signals. So from uh, these uh, results uh, coming from the computation, uh, we then uh, need um, to compute the fragility curve. So, so I could just draw the curve from uh, the signals, but if I want to compute the risk, I need an equation uh, to model the fragility curve. So then we use a statistical model of the obtained responses uh, to be able to compute the, the probability. Um, 
for this kind of uh, damage indicator, the log normal fragility model works well. So that's what I chose here. And the probability of failure uh, is given by the cumulative distribution function of the uh, log normal distribution with a mean an and a log uh, standard deviation beta. There are several methods to identify the parameters then of your uh, statistical model. Not going into uh, too much details here. So applied to this example, with again damage states being the maximum displacement, alpha the intensity measure the peak ground acceleration, uh, the parameters of the fragility model identified by linear regression. Uh, we need then thresholds uh, from which we decide, we have to decide what is uh, our damage. So I can, uh, I want to know when, what is the probability of the structure to have a maximum top displacement exceeding the height over 200, for example, that is my choice for a damage threshold, and the half of it too. And here you have the results of this computation uh, for uh, the first damage uh, threshold, so the probability for the top displacement to exceed H over uh, 200 here in red, and the probability uh, for the um, maximum top displacement uh, to exceed uh, half of the thresholds in uh, black here. So now that you have seen step by step how uh, we can build a fragility model by a simulation, I'm going to show you a larger application that comes from a research project uh, that's a postdoctoral project that I supervised uh, from uh, Alessandro uh, Stocchi um, with the goal of uh, evaluate the effect of uh, earthquakes to a building typology. It's not only one building, it's a set of buildings that all correspond to, for this example, to French masonry industrial buildings from the 19th uh, century with the goal of uh, comparing the predicted uh, damage uh, by this approach uh, to in situ observation for low to moderate uh, seismic in intensity uh, that uh, can have occurred in the southeast uh, part of France uh, near here. Um, first of all, since it's a building typology, now we are going to take into account the variability in the buildings. So uh, our choices for the study um, were, uh, were to take into account some variability on the global geometry, global dimensions of the buildings, opening uh, size, and also opening to wall distribution and ratio. Um, there are also variability in uh, local features and also uncertainties because we don't know all the mechanical parameters of the existing uh, structures, uh, especially the floor stiffness and mass and also the link between the floor and the walls. Okay. And, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the wall thickness and mechanical properties were also considered as uh, variable. So from these uh, studies, uh, Alessandro programmed a parametric mesh generator to uh, get uh, 3D finite element models of uh, realistic uh, structures corresponding to the building typology. Now, the 3D finite element model can be very useful, but you imagine if uh, we want to do many computations, it's too time consuming and resource consuming. Um, so from the model, we adopted a global modeling strategy based on uh, model decomposition. So from the 3D model, uh, we identified the mode shapes and from a uh, nonlinear pushover, that is a static uh, com computation, um, we identified the response of a nonlinear, uh, so a structure that can be damaged, a single degree of freedom structure for each mode. Then the problem 
is reduced to study many uh, single degree of freedom oscillators. And uh, here, um, dynamically, even if it's nonlinear in this case, it's uh, much faster than studying the whole structure. Uh, here you have the results of uh, this uh, study. So um, as ground motions, uh, we took a synthetic database of uh, seismic signals with intensity measure, again, the peak ground acceleration. And as, um, so the structural response, as I said, it's a nonlinear single degree of freedom model. Uh, and the damage measure here is the frequency drop-off that uh, represents damage um, because the frequency of the structure decreases when it damages. Uh, with uh, two results corresponding to slight and moderate damage. So here you have the whole set of computed fragility curves for 200 case studies with the means for the tooth results represented by the solid lines. And you see the dispersion of the results uh, that is influenced by the structural uncertainties. So to conclude, uh, my goal was uh, to give you an insight uh, into what are the fragility curves and how to build them. So it's the probability that the damage measure exceeds a defined result given the hazard intensity. To compute them uh, numerically, that means that you need a model of structures, you need a model of your hazard, you need to define a damage, a relevant damage indicator that depends on the case, depends on what you want to look at. You need to define also a damage threshold for this indicator and a relevant intensity measures. And all these points, um, sometimes they are hard to define. Um, there is uh, no uh, uh, common agreement uh, of, uh, for each hazard or for each case of what to choose. So it's still a subject of research. Uh, this tool is useful as a decision support tool included in the probabilistic uh, risk assessment approach. And it can also be used uh, using inverse analysis to improve past hazard knowledge. Okay, thank you for your attention.